Hello everyone, welcome、um, to my channel. So, I'm going to be talking about today,、um, you know, a lot of us don't know about this in the Word, in the Bible, if you read the Bible. A lot of us don't know about this. But、uh, there is a story about a fortune teller, or she a medium, I think it's a medium, a spiritualist, or, you know, in those days. And she was not on the side of,、uh, per se, what we would say, like the, the,、uh, the seers and, you know, the people of God and those who have the visions would be on that side. There's a difference between the ones who are getting the messages from God. And the ones who are just,、uh, you know, kind of doing their own thing and pulling up the spirit worlds, and they could be actually invoking demons as well, but、uh, just kind of using their own sauce and their own mix instead of going by the Lord's direction and letting Him lead the way. They are dwelling in full force with their own recontinences. And that's what this seer was. I don't want to mention Seer, I believe she was a medium that Saul went to, and she's called the Witch of Endor. Okay, so the Endor, E N D O R,、uh, I guess it's a, a region there that,、um, yeah, specific region that people lived in. Hold on one second, let me see if I can find a little bit more information on Endor location or、uh, what was. It sounds like I'm saying indoor, come indoors, but no.、Uh, indoor is actually、uh, a location. Let's see, snap with it, go. I think it's so kind of slow right now. But、uh, while we're waiting on that to load, and I don't know why it's taking forever years to do so.、Uh, okay, okay. So I was, I was wrong, wasn't I? A witch of indoor. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'm looking at it right now because indoor has some type of association as well. Uh, to do with the Star Wars movie. <laughs> so, endless for,、uh, forests, savannas, grasslands, mountain ranges, and a、uh, few oceans. So, George Lucas must、uh, use that in a Star Wars movie. But today, that's not we're what we're talking about a Star Wars movie. So, Endor is a village, actually.、Uh, the location of the ancient site of Endor is widely debated. And many locations have been suggested from the biblical accounts an indoor that is located on the south edge of the Jezreel Valley seems to the best fit. Jezreel Valley seems. So you all can look at that on your map. So I don't really know where that is. But、uh, the tribal allotments of Manasseh, Saul's journey to Endor, and the defeat of Sisera's army all fit well within a location that is on the side of the valley. So, somewhere between, I believe, I B E A M, I B L E A M, and T A N O T H T A, catastrophe, 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 <laughs> catastrophe, catastrophe, sorry, T A, catastrophe, A N A C H. However, there are difficulties with this location. From the origin of the name, a spring must also be located somewhere near. And archaeological, archaeological evidence from the time of Joshua, Judges, and Saul is required. So we'll get into the story without much ado.、Um, I'm going to try to read this with personality. I don't know if I, I don't know if I get, if I'm going to do okay with this, but I thought it, I find it very interesting about Saul visiting. The witch of Endor. As we know, God said, do not go to the mediums because he is strictly against that. But,、um, and also at the same turn, when Jesus、uh, bare the cross for our sins, God says to all men, even those who lay under the ground that are dead, peace is to all men, for the Lamb has been slain and has risen, has defeated death, hell, and anything that comes after. Uh, you asking for forgiveness and going forward with the plan of the Lord, if you choose, of course, it's your will. So here's Saul perplexed. And this is actually in 1 Samuel 28 3 25.、Saul、cons consults a medium. Let's get into it. Now, Samuel had died, 
And all of Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spiritualists out of the land. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunim. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is medium, that I might go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Wow, that's when you know you may got mad. And he's forgiving, but just some that little verse right there that hits hard. So I'll inquire to God and God did not answer. Yeah, we we just don't want to make God mad. So I'm um, continuing verse eight. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went. And um, two men... Okay, back at it. Uh, no, you don't want to get... I wonder what Saul did. We'll get into that later. But uh, then the woman said to him, So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went with two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he says, Please conduct a seance for me. And bring up for me the one sh I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, Look, you know what Saul has Why have you come here? You have put my life at stake. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come up in you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he nothing said, will happen to bring you. up Samuel for me. I could say that more dramatically. <laughs> then the woman said, well, who shall I bring up for you? Nah. What does this form look like? And he said, bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. Wow, she must have really saw a ghost or something. Oh, heck no. <laughs> See some ghost. You can have the house. <laughs> Go camp out outside. Okay, <laughs> that's in my opinion. I think. Okay, so I saw enough of them uh, visually and through dreams. Where, boy, well, hopefully that well, Sammy must be nice. Okay, going, going, because I'm getting off of. Uh, sorry. So number twelve. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out loud with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. Oh. Wait. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried. Oh, okay. So Samuel must have told her that Saul is talking to you right now or something. Right? That must have been it. So, he so you're looking at one of the snaps I took at my old place of residence as a ghost. You see that? Go check that uh, ghost uh, short out on my channel. We're at 12 right now. We're at 1 Samuel 28, 3 through 25, but we're starting at verse 12 right here. Okay, the nitty gritty. So when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul saying, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the, but woman, you are Saul. and the king said to her, do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, what is his form? And she said, his form is an old man who is coming up and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stopped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? we got to find out what a mantle is. And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me. 
and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Don't make God mad at you guys. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, I'm not going to speak about that because we've all been there, I think. And if I say that I haven't, I wouldn't lie. Don't make him mad at you. We thank God he's, um, he, he's forgiving. But the motive, he knows your motives. Um, therefore, I have called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, so why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? And the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me. For the Lord has turned the, torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Immediately Saul fell full length on the ground and was dreadfully afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all day or night. And the woman came to Saul and saw that he was severely troubled and said to him, Look, your maidservant has obeyed, obeyed your voice, and I have put my life in, the, in my life, and I have put my life in my hands and headed the words which you spoke to me. Now, therefore, please heed also the voice of your maidservant, and let me set a piece of bread before you and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. But he refused and said, yes, I will not hungry. eat. So his servants together with the woman urged him, and he heeded their voice. Then he arose from the ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house, and she hastened to kill it. She took flour and kneaded it, and baked only been bread from it. So she brought it before Saul and his servants, and they ate. They rose and went away that night. Wow, that is a powerful scripture. Uh, you know, guys, I, I says I was going to get into that, and I am. We have to be honest um, with what we do here. That's 25. Did he leave at that time? Night. It's 27. 28. Yeah, we have to be honest. He would be going to 1 Samuel 29. I think that we'll go into another um, of what happened there. We have to be honest about our relationship with God. And we have to also be honest when we know that the Lord is, uh, probably didn't take a liking until we what we did. We can't just make up things and uh, say, yeah, well, God knows. He understands. I'll do this. And he'll understand what I'm saying. Because I'm here to tell you personally that that is not true. Um, I'm here to tell you personally that I have very much indeed experienced uh, a momentarily departure when I asked God something and or something was did and I didn't hear from him and guess what guys it was more than a year and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't something that uh it wasn't something that I was saying, oh, you know, I did this and here I, I know he'll come back because I, no, I literally, the punishment to me is not feeling the presence of the Lord. I don't ever want to pretend, oh, he's there, although I'm doing this. Uh, he's there. He understands. No, because his word is his word, right? So I don't know what had happened. I don't know. I can tell you this. Though, throughout the whole time, the protection of the Lord was there throughout the whole time. Um, he never surrendered me to anything, and I hope and pray he never forgets. Now I can, I can really relate to when the people of the Bible say, Lord, remember me. 
Um, you know, I can really relate that even if you are upset with me, hopefully momentarily or temporary, temporarily, you'll remember me. And uh, because of Jesus, you know, that is what the peace is for everyone. The peace to all men on earth. We're coming into Christmas. I can't wait to do stories and stuff. But that is what it is when it when it comes to that. But yes, yeah, just like anyone, you can upset the Lord. And one thing is you want to remain relevant to him. But in doing so, you cannot remain relevant to your own agenda. You have to strive to do his. So, yeah. And we can't we can't. We can't continue to feel sorry for someone who wants to continue to do evil. My cat is playing a drum over there. This is his favorite toy, so he's going wild over there. But uh, yeah, we have we can't pretend to uh, feel sorry for someone that wants to do evil if we're going to do the agenda of the Lord, right? So yeah, getting back to that, it was uh, it was a very long time. I would be asking things or. I would say, can you stop these dreams? Or it, was, it would be something there. And I always felt the protection. But uh, if you know, and you know, for real, when the Lord answers you, you know, not just would you want to pretend, oh, that was for me, that was from God, but truly what his will is. And when he answers you, those of you who are believers or those of you seeking to want to know the Lord, then you will know the, the things honestly that you have to do. And you'll fill them. You, you will fill them if you're letting yourself honestly fill with the Lord once you do. Like your music, rock star, but can you hang tight? <laughs> Sorry, that's my cat. Um, but yeah, getting back to that. So it was a long time, and in that time, I was very bewildered. I was very sad. I was very troubled. I probably felt the same feelings as Saul. I'm not making fun, judging Saul, nothing. I'm glad that we're all forgiven. I'm glad that we're all forgiven. Thank God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost that we are forgiven, but no, no, you can't take lightly what the Lord doesn't want you to do. So you'll find yourself in a bad way. And it was a bad way for a couple of years. And I felt like, yeah, I will still have his protection here. He really isn't talking to me. I mean, it's been a while. And when he just started to, I know to hang on tight to do the best ever to what he wants me to, you know, that, that's for real, guys. So yeah, I had a, uh, I, I had to, uh, I, I surprised myself because things that I would say or things that I would do, I had to really look at it and say, is that what God wants me to do? And I had to change it up to what he wanted me to do. And what he wants you to do is always the right, perfect way. Okay, so that's about saw and uh, wow, what a lesson. Okay, until next time. Thanks, ladies and gents.